guys, it's Emma, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a great 2020, and today we'll be starting my 2019 best of, worst of, those kind of videos. 2019 review videos, basically. So today we are starting off with the seven best series that I read in 2019. So when I say this, I mean series that I have read and completed in 2019, because there are so many series that I just read the first book of in 2019, but never finished. So these are only ones that I have read through that everything that is currently published. So I can say that they are my favorite series of the year. And quite a few of these series have become some of my favorite series of all time. So starting at number seven, we have the Every Heart of Doorway series by Shauna McGuire. So this series follows along children who have gone into portal worlds. And these portal worlds are anything from the goblin market to like a candy cane dream world to like, I don't even know, different worlds. <laughs> some of them are logical, some of them are illogical, you know, they run the gamut. So the Every Heart Doorway series starts with Every Heart of Doorway, which is sort of, these books are weird because they're not sequential. So the second book is actually a prequel to this first book. So the first book is actually like a murder mystery set at the school. So it's sort of like a boarding school murder mystery, which is very weird. But I have given almost every book four stars. I ended up giving one of them like a three or 3.5 because that was Beneath the Sugar Sky and that was just because there was a lot of fat phobic comments coming from a fat character and it was just like triggering in a way that I didn't expect. But I do really enjoy the series as a whole and enjoy the analysis of portal worlds and then all these children coming back and having to readjust to the real world is very interesting. So I highly re recommend that if you haven't read it. Book five is coming out in 2020. I think it's March. I don't know. <laughs> don't take my word for it. But book five is coming. So I will definitely be reading that in 2020. Number six. So number six on our list is Saga. This is a graphic novel series that is an adult fantasy sci-fi series. <laughs> um, so this was one of my first forays into graphic novels. I haven't really read graphic novels prior to this year and definitely not like seriously since I was a child. So it was really interesting. But in this, it's sort of a take on Romeo and Juliet and Starcrest Lovers because these two people from two different alien races um, end up getting together, falling in love and having a baby. And this story is told from that child's perspective. So there are nine volumes currently out of Saga and they are currently on a hiatus. Oh, I should mention this is by Brian Gavon and Fiona Staples. Sorry. So yeah, so they are currently on a hiatus. So I did read the first nine volumes for free via Hoopla through my library. So highly recommend checking it out if you do. I just read them on my phone and it was super quick and easy. And it was good for like if I was ever out and about and in a line or like at a family gathering and there was a time to like just sit on my phone. It was super fun and I really enjoy these. Now these are very adult and very dark and follow a lot of dark topics that have, I have trigger warnings for like um, assault on a, ch like sexual assault on a child, deep, um, violence, you know, a lot of different things. Um, I will link my Goodreads because I have some trigger warnings in them and then you can see like other trigger warnings if you just search them, but do be forewarned and check out those trigger warnings for you. And yeah, I gave each volume four stars. Number five. So next we have the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. And I'm sort of counting all six of them because it is two trilogies, you know, that in the middle have the more, um, the infernal devices in them. But I'm just holding up book one because I don't want to hold up six books. But yes, so if you are unaware, The Immortal Instruments follows 16 year old, or at least she's 16 in the beginning, Clary Frey, who is a normal human, or so she thinks, when one day she runs into these shadow hunters, um, when she sees this demon and the shadow hunters going after him. And she gets swept into the world of shadow hunters who are these demon hunters who are trying to protect the human race. This is a classic urban fantasy from the 
I guess, early 2000s? I don't know. Didn't, when did this come out? 2007. So, you know, that kind of time. But somehow, I didn't read this, but my mom did. I don't really know. But yes, so I just really love the friendships and relationships that are in this series. I just fell in love. I definitely am more Mortal Instruments than Infernal Devices. And I gave the first three books 4.5 stars, City of Fallen Angels a 3.5 because frankly most of that was a cash grab and like nostalgia. And then the last two books I gave a 4 or 4.5. So definitely a very high rated series for me. I really love these and I'm definitely going to reread them again. These were some of the first books that I ever annotated and I just love them. They got more and more annotated as we go and I just loved my read of these this year. Next we have number four which is the Girl Meets Duke series by Tessa Dare. So the Girl Meets Duke series is an adult historical romance series which is super new to me because I didn't start reading romance books until this year and actually pretty late this year. I think it was June. So yes, but the Girl Meets Duke series follows these different friends who all live in London and they are all these single ladies who fall in love with different Dukes and it is the best. The newest one that just came out, there's three books that are currently out. Yes, yeah, so we have The Duchess Deal is number one, The Governess Game is number two, and then the third one that just came out is The Wallflower Wager, which has been described as a Hufflepuff Slytherin romance and it is great. But I think my favorite will always be The Duchess Deal um, because I just love the relationship of the characters. I ended up giving all of these 4.5 or 4 stars, I don't remember, but very high ratings again and I'm so so excited to read more from Tessa Dare and I think that there might be a fourth book. Oh yeah there is because Alex Oh no, Alex was second one. Oh gosh. I think there's a fourth one coming. <laughs> I hope there's a fourth one coming. And Tessa Dare also does a really awesome job of bringing back the couples that we met in previous books and bringing them to the newest ones. So we definitely get to see our favorite characters from the first two and the third and hopefully that will continue. Tessa Dare also has a ton of other series. So I am currently making my way through the Castles Ever After series, I think. And I'm really enjoying that as well. So I highly recommend checking out any of Tessa Dare's work. Number three, we have the Royal series by Rachel Hawkins. So this is actually book two. Book one is Royals, which is now Prince Charming. And that is my favorite. That I ended up giving five stars. I ended up giving Her Royal Highness four stars. Just basically, there wasn't enough time. It was too short. I wanted it to be longer. But anyways, see Goodreads for full reviews for everything. I been on top of my reviews this year and I have a review for every single book that I've read this year. So the first book, Prince Charming, is following our main character whose sister is just about to be married to the Prince of Scotland. So it's all about Daisy trying to like get used to this world and go going into being royalty basically in Scotland. And it was just so cute. The romance in it was adorable. The end was like a John Cusack movie, which someone who grew up watching 80s movies I love. And yeah, I don't own it yet, but I have to own it. It's definitely one of my favorite books of the entire year. And this series is just so great. And I don't know if there is going to be more in the series, but I would definitely love to see these characters again. Number two is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. So this is another graphic novel series. So volume three is coming out in March, I believe. And I read the first two volumes on um, Tapas, which is a free website that you can read. Um, Heartstopper, I also believe you can read it on Alice Oseman's Tumblr, and obviously there's a print version, which I desperately need to get my hands on the print versions of Volume 1 and Volume 2. But Heartstopper is the cutest graphic novel series that basically goes, <laughs> boy meets boy, boys fall in love. And it is adorable. We also follow our, um, one character is out and our other character, Charlie, is not, so we go through him trying to understand his feelings. He's always liked girls, but now there's this other boy that he likes. And just, it was so sweet. And I really enjoyed that representation, the bio representation, gay representation, all of it. I love it. And I definitely want to read Alice Oseman's novels, especially Solitaire, because they are in Solitaire. So yeah. 
And we are at my favorite series of the entire year. The number one series I read in 2019 is The Illuminate Files by Amy Goffman and Jay Kristoff. So this is a sci-fi series that is told entirely in mixed media format. So we have surveillance footage. We have this. We have instant messaging. So when I said this, it's because I didn't know if I should talk about it. But basically in Illuminate, oh, I'm sorry for that glare. Got a new ring light. We're working with it. So in Illuminate, we are following Katie and Ezra who have just broken up, but now their planet is being attacked and they have to work together to figure out what's going on and try to save the fleet. So yeah, this was a super intense YA sci-fi. I hadn't really read sci-fi before this year, so this was so fun. It also gave me all those great feelings that I get when I watch like Star Wars. And it was just so action-packed, so good. The romance didn't take over the story, in my opinion, and just added another layer, and it was just so good. I ended up reading the entire series in like a few weeks, and I love them. I read them all through the library, so the only one that I have currently is Illuminae. Also, this book is just beautiful. Like, the effort that went into the cover design, it's great. So these are some of my favorite series that I read in 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know down below what your favorite series of the year is and maybe I'll check it out for 2020. See you guys in another video soon. Bye.